Hello again. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Lisa and it's lovely to have you visit me here. If you're new then a really big welcome and obviously a very big welcome to anyone who's coming back again because it's always lovely to have you join me. I'm in my sewing corner today. I'm sort of busy between sewing, filming and um, doing all sorts of bits and bobs. So what have we got on the cards today? Last time I came by I showed you lots of projects I hadn't finished. Well, I still haven't finished them I think but, and then I thought to heck with it I'm going to get on with something new. So that's what I'm doing today. I have got, I will hold this fabric up. I'm going to do this as a peggy bodice. So that's what I'm working on today. I haven't decided on the skirt yet because I haven't got quite enough because it's a narrow width fabric to make the three tier skirt I decided I was going to make with this one. I always like to put a slightly different skirt with each bodice just so it feels a bit different. But what the heck if I put the same skirt as before on it? Does it really matter? I don't know. I might have to. Um, so still undecided on the skirt but I'm making the bodice and I thought you'd like to see which bits was I showing you? Um, I'm going to show you the how I put the underarm gussets in because I know people were interested in that and they're a bit of a fiddle faddle. So I'm going to show you um, doing the underarm gussets and my way of putting on the midriff sections and obviously other bits that may interest you in the making of said dress and then hopefully by the end of all of this I will have a dress made to wear this Sunday where I'm going to a fabric fair and a vintage fair um, probably with an umbrella up and it will be my second birthday of the year, my adopted birthday. So the day that my parents celebrate me officially becoming theirs. So I want a pretty dress for said occasion. So off we go, let's start the sewing. I've got all my bits cut out other than the skirt. Um, so then I'll show you the techniques as we go along. My apologies for my disgusting iron board cover. I really must do something about that. But I have a shiny new iron of which I have um, kind of discoloured the fabric a little bit because I had it on too hot a setting. I didn't know how good the iron was going to be. So mm, normally you'd have a problem with cotton. So that's not good. I like to sew um, along the seam allowance and then it's something I can press over. So when I lay it on the uh, main bodice part, it's really easy to top stitch that seam allowance over. And with that all neatly pressed, give it another press and that's the side panel and then this is the centre which, which I've already done and I've clipped into the curves. And then I will place them right sides together, you know, matching up all the notches. So I do the first pinning that way and then I can flip over to make sure it's all in place and pin from the front ready for top stitching it through. I'm just checking I'm happy with everything, smoothing it out. And this is my midriff all stitched in. Now to sew in the gussets. I've marked where they will go in the underarm seam. Um, this is one of the triangles that will be going in. Um, and make sure you've got your correct front and back pieces. So they will lay in like that. And you'll have strips that you'll have cut that will face the um, bit that you're going to sew because we've got to do a, a cut in. Um, it can be tricky marking them out. So I often bring pins in from the underneath because when I'm going to place that strip right sides together, I won't know exactly where to mark it. So with the pins, I know I'm placing, I can feel where the pins are then I can place that in the right part, um, you know, and I'll, I'll attach that. So I've got that attached and then I'll poke my pins through to the front and then I can do a chalk mark to make a new line on that facing, if that makes sense. Then I've stitched around and then I will carefully cut up right to the top. make sure I go right to the top but not through it. Right so that's all ready and then I'm going to give that a good press turning that back through to the wrong side of my bodice. So giving that a really good um, 
press all the way around. Do that on both sides. Sorry, a bit of shaky camera action there. I think I knocked the stand. So I'll, I'll make sure the other side's flat. I just wanted you to see all of this. So once I've got that side pressed, I can then come in and really make sure that the top is ironed really well. So a lot of pressing action um, and then sort of moulding that fabric to try and make sure it's really, really flat at that top bit. And then turn it over and I'll give it another press just to make sure I'm really happy with it. And you can see I've got bits overhanging so I'm just going to trim those off. Don't need those extra bits and I can totally see where I'll be sewing my um, seams. Now I, once I've got all that facing done, it's time to pin in these uh, triangle gussets. So making sure that you match right at the top with that center pin. And this can be a lot of pinning back and forth till you get it right. And then going along and matching the dot at the bottom and along that line. And then from the other side, just matching it. And sometimes you won't be matching that straight edge. It's just making sure that it all fits in and it, it's not pulling. So I'll just rough pin for now. And then I will match front and back just to make sure that everything matches with the seams, if that makes sense. So making sure before I commit to sewing, that I'm happy. And then I'll unpin that and I've top stitched in the triangle and that's what it looks like on the underside. And here it is all done and finished on both sides. So this is what it looks like. I'll sew those overlocking threads in. And this is what the underside looks like and I French seamed it all. And then I'll turn it to show you the other side and how it all moves and how it works. Got this far with um, Peggy. I've made the whole bodice, put the midriff together, facings are in. Um, I had to make the decision on the skirt. What I really wanted to do was a three-tiered gathered skirt. Um, I'll, I'll pop a picture up, I was just trying to think. But this is a really narrow width fabric and I just didn't have enough. I think I had to cut out about nine different widths, you know, to put them together and I just wouldn't have had enough fabric, which is a shame. That's the skirt I really fancied for this. So I went to my usual you know, go to, which gives me the three quarter circles. I love the slimming effect at the top and the swooshiness. So Butterick 6055, which appears a lot. I've got it on in the skirt that, you know, the dress that I'm wearing today. It's a really comfortable, lovely pattern. Um, should I stand up a bit? You know, with these, can you see these? You know, the horseshoe pockets. But I decided on this one, I was going to let the fabric do all the talking and not put the pockets on. And I thought, well, I'll make a, a sash. I'll just grab that. There's enough fabric to piece two bits together. And so that wasn't as wide as I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be quite wide to go around and have a big bow at the waist. And when I popped the dress on, I thought, oh, it looks too plain. So I decided pockets were needed. So I've got the pockets here, which I'll um, zoom in and, and show you. They're really, really I lovely. Like Butterick 6055. I always love the pockets, um, you know, the horseshoe shaped pocket with the bow. And I thought, I'm not going to put pockets I'm on. I'm going to have a plain front on this um, skirt. I'm just going to go for simple. And I put it on and it just didn't look great. This fabric is stunning close up, but from a distance it just looks quite plain. So I decided that I was going to make heart shaped pockets. If I turn them over, to the wrong side so you can see them a bit more. So I used the um, pattern from the Butterick um, to get the size really, the width and the size and the depth and then I made my heart. So I got my size hearts um, and I know I need this much open because that's on my width of hand to get in so what I've done is I've top stitched that bit that will be the opening and I wanted to trim to make the pocket stand the colour because I, I want to sort of dress this up with cardigan shoes brooches they're going to bring the colours out in this dress and all I had I wanted rickrack and I only had enough cream to do one pocket and I'm not going out in the storm to get some more rickrack or can't be bothered to just so I looked in my 
um, trims. And you see here I've got all sorts of beautiful um, vintage trims in this one. I just adore these. All plans one day to be in set in um, blouses and, and whatnot. There's ones with um, hearts. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. There's all sorts of beautiful trims in here. Anyway, I looked in that tub or that tin rather and I found this trim and I had literally just enough with about that much left over to do both. So what I've done is look working from this side I've given it a rick-racky kind of effect, pinned it round and then I'm going to do a running stitch on here to hold this in place before I lay these on and sew them to the skirt from here. So I'll top stitch that down. That will be my pockets in place. I'm really, really happy with those. Now here we are. I've just tilted the angle rather than lower it so you can see the pockets, the bodice and the pockets. So I'm really, really pleased with these. I've made heart-shaped pockets. If I can get my hand in. I, I know my hand fits in there. I'll show you in a bit. So my hand fits in that top bit and I've trimmed it. Now, I was saying about the, the waist tie. I decided that the waist tie is going to sort of cover up these pockets. So I just tied one in a bow because I was thinking they would look rather nice. Can you see just in the V of the heart shaped pocket? Not secured down and so I'm worried will the weight of that hold the pocket away but I think that would be a nice so feature. I think I'm going to go with a bow on there but then that looks like there's a lot. This is about balance in your garment. To me that looks like there's a lot going on down here um, so I'd need to tie it in. So I'm thinking do I put a bow here between my bosoms just you know a short little one there so I'd have three the rule of three in design I like that I put one up there but I don't think I'm going to like it up so I know you can't see that so they're the decisions I'm making and I, I often do this while I'm sewing um, I'll cut a bodice and I might have a firm idea on a skirt and it might change but some design details shall I put the camera up and I'll talk to you you don't want to be talking to my tummy, do you? Back again. So I often find a make will evolve as I go along. I'll suddenly think, oh, I want to put piping between the seams, or I want rickrack, or I want this kind of pocket, or add bows, or, you know. Um, no, I don't want to do that skirt. I want to pop another one in. I don't know about you. It might just be me, but, yeah, very often it evolves as it goes along. Now there's two asides I want to tell you because I'm filming this over various days as and when I have um, time to hop on here to um, be sewing and share it with you. I knock on the door in the rain, so it's very poor posty, I felt sorry for him, and he handed a large parcel over and it was this. Can you see? Let's come up close. Yes, you can now. You can see the full beauty of this one. I shall hang that over my shoulder. And this one coming into. Now, these were on um, New Craft House. And last Thursday I saw, I think I've only bought from them, but that was an actual fair once. These were, um, they were saying, oh, they'll do a drop last Thursday. And they said these were high-end designer. I, I can't guess um, which designer, so if anybody knows, I'd love to know who's... Um, fabric collection this was you know then what dresses or whatever were made from it they had some absolutely beautiful fabrics and they all had quite a vintage appeal you know a vintage vibe and I just loved these blue rows I love blue and the pink yeah so they are just absolutely lush they're not they're not focusing please focus so the people at home can see doesn't want to play ball does it and um, and then this one, this one is cream. The ribbons go actually this way. Both crepes, black ribbons, and there's like little black hearts here on a cream background with red roses. What's not to love? Um, I bought these without a plan, but they were just so good. I mean, they were they were selling out really quickly. I'd forgotten before I went to teach about the drop. So I got home and the two that I really, really wanted were still there. So they've come today and I'm super excited and I just I wanted to tell somebody, really. And it'll be a while before they get washed because it keeps raining. Unless I pop over to my daughter's and pop them in her tumble dryer. Right, back on with the sewing. I've um, shown you more of a close-up of the pockets and um, yeah, I've, I've going to position them. Um, I'm pretty happy I've positioned one. 
But you know what? I don't think I'm going to get time today to finish making this dress. I know, say, in evenings when it's dark and I can't film or whatever, so, I'll be able to. So it's going to be really hard and that will stop me putting this video up that I want to share with you. So I am going to pop the dress on without the back zip in because really once the pockets are sewn on, all I've got to do is put the zip in and then hem the sleeves and hem the skirt. And that's obviously got to hang for 24 hours. So I'm going to pop it on as it is so you can get a feel for how it is. And I've just remembered one other thing I wanted to tell you. So how the skirt's cut, it's, it's this, this shape, yeah? With that against the selvage. So when I got to the centre front, I'm holding this bit up. It was all right, I had enough width for the back. But when I cut the front two pieces, can you see there that little triangle? So this is one half, that's the other half it was overhanging the edge of the fabric but you know so it'd be missing this bit here so I mean you really don't see it and it's going to be right on the bottom and then it's going to get lost in the hair there'll be even less there what I do is something called cartwheeling the fabric in so you've got your bit that's missing I will I will show this properly in a, another YouTube but at the minute this is like drawing in the air explanation you've got your fabric say finishes here but the pattern still goes over the edge here so I cut a scrap of fabric out and I would lay it underneath with enough um, seam allowance to attach the two and I just pin that to it but it's all facing the right way up we're not worrying about seams at that moment sorry this is just um falling off my neck and uh, making me feel really tickly um so I lay that bit of fabric there and then put the plat pattern back over <clears throat> you know cut that hem and that side I've done that a few times on the bottom of skirts where the width goes over the edge of the fabric so it's called cartwheeling in you know this is a busy print so I wasn't having to pattern match but you know if you've got a pattern to match you're gonna have to be a bit fussy about how you're doing it so I'm gonna pop the dress on for you okay right at the moment we can just see the um the bodice or just knocking the pin out holding the pocket on um it feels tight here it's really pulling down but you know I've got ease in here but and yeah there's drag lines even though I've got the um, gusset underarm gussets in for movement I mean it'd be worse without those and I have altered this pattern but I think this is such a lightweight lawn it's really pulling feels uncomfortable so I think in another one what I would do is I would from the shoulder here just increase the seam allowance a little bit just so it doesn't feel like it's pulling down a bit now I don't know I think this is going to be the sort of dress I might think oh good I'm glad to get it off um so and I absolutely love really this body pleased with the fit I mean this fit I mean I think you see my black bright's really showing up on here um so I, I will wear um a slip because I chose not to um underline this I just did facings which I'm not a huge fan of um but yeah I'll be wearing a slip underneath this but I absolutely love the shape of this um style let's go down a bit and then you can see the pocket I've just randomly placed one pocket on and I'm not turning around because I'm obviously haven't sewn up the back seam to put the zip in as yet so I don't want to flash my pants okay, to so you you can see the pocket there I'm really pleased with that I mean obviously I only just pinned it at the top but I don't know if this is the exact place I had marked on where I want it to be but you can see my hand will go in I think the place will be slightly different because I've made it so that my hand will come in so that's how I decide where I'm putting them I just put the, the dress on and then I pin them and I keep working out you know the natural place that my hands go and that will be the pocket and if we put the bow on the front of the Pocket. I won't have it as such a long drop as that but it will have that kind of I'm finish up here today um, as I said I've got a little bit more sewing to do with this and I'm just not going to get it finished so I will share the finished dress with you either in a short um, if I get to wear it to the vintage fair I'm going um, to on Sunday or I will show it to you next time but I wanted to take you on the sewing adventure with this 
dress that I'm really enjoying making um, and I know I'll wear even though it's a little bit tied in the, the shoulders. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed what I've been working on and um, showing you. Um, please comment because I always love to hear what you've got to say you know and then I, I reply back. Um, share, let people know about my YouTube channel. It's always lovely having new people join us here. My um, eternal Thanks for your support with my YouTube adventures. I really enjoy it. So until next time, thanks very much for joining me. Bye-bye.